Hello everyone, my name is Victor and in this video I want to talk about the Fisher projections, which, while a useful tool to show a chain with a bunch of chiral carbons, are a nightmare to convert into other molecular representations like bond line structures. So stick with me for the next few minutes and I will show you how to deal with the Fisher projections and avoid common exam mistakes. Ready? Then let's get right to it. Well, first of all, what exactly is the Fisher projection? Fisher projection is traditionally a vertical chain of atoms like this, with the groups sitting on that like beads on a string. In the Fisher projection, we always look at our vertical lines as if they're looking away from us, and our horizontal lines as if they are looking at us. So sometimes those structures are called bow tie structures because looks like every carbon on my structure is wearing a little cute blue bow tie. So in other words, if I'm standing next to my structure and looking at that from, let's say, this perspective, what I'm going to see is a chain of carbons that kind of look like a C shape. So I'm going to have carbon number one, carbon number two, number three, four, five, and six over here. So if I number them, they're going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six, just like what I have in my middle representation. Now, carbon number one is just a carbonyl, so I'm going to show that CO double bond and a hydrogen for my aldehyde functional group there, and move on to carbon number two. On carbon number two, I have the OH group that is physically closer to my uh, little observer guy, which means that that OH is, from this perspective, going to be sitting on the wedge, and the hydrogen, which is looking away from me, is going to be sitting on the dash. On the next atom, on carbon number three, I have now hydrogen closer to the observer, which means that that hydrogen is now going to be on the wedge, and the OH group, which is further away from me, is sitting on the dash like that. Moving on to the next carbon, carbon number four has a similar situation to what I have on carbon number two, with the OH group looking at me and hydrogen looking away, and finally, when I move on to my carbon number 5, it is same situation again, where OH is looking towards the observer, aka me, and hydrogen is looking away. And of course, there is no meaningful stereochemistry on my last carbon, carbon number 6, so that one I will just rewrite as CH2OH just like that. Now, if I look at my structure that I drew on the right, that C-shaped bond line structure, that's kind of a really bad bond line structure, wouldn't you agree? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to redraw it in a more acceptable way, like we normally use zigzags for bond line structures, but um, how exactly would I do that? Well, let's talk about that. I'm going to start here with a somewhat easier structure that I had on the previous page, just so we don't have to go through the same steps over and over again and get our structure a little bit faster. So, first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to number my carbons from the top, one, two, three, and four to the last one on the bottom. Traditionally, when we are talking about the Fisher projections, the most oxidized carbon is going to be on the top of our chain or closer to the top of our chain, and then the rest of the chain is going to be stringing downwards from that point. The next step, I'm going to draw a skeleton with four carbons, so a zigzag with four carbons, as if I'm just starting to draw my dash and wedge structure. So I'm going to have two, three, four carbons like that, and let's say I will number it from the right to left, so one, two, three, and four. Carbon number one is easy, carbon number one here is just an aldehyde, so I'm going to draw it out right away, and basically forget about it and move on to the next carbon. So, carbon number two. Well, from this point we do have stereochemistry, so there are a couple of different methods that you can use uh, to come up with the correct stereochemistry in your bond line structure. So, method number one, we can assign our RNS stereo descriptors to the chiral carbons in the Fisher projections, then randomly put OHs or whatever else uh, might be those groups on our zigzags, and check our RNS stereo descriptors again now in the bond 
command line structure and see if we guessed right. If not, we'll just have to switch our dashes and wedges. So if I use this approach, then my carbon number two is going to have the R stereo descriptor and carbon number three is also going to have the R stereo descriptor as well. If you don't remember how to deal with your R and S stereo descriptors, check out the video. I'm going to leave the link in the description below. So now I'm going to arbitrarily say that carbon number two has the OH on the wedge and carbon number three has the OH on the wedge as well. And I will check for the R and S theory descriptors uh, at that point as well. Of course, I'm going to add the last OH and carbon number four. That one does not have any stereo chemistry, but I still need to have it there for the correct assignments. So carbon number two as drawn right now is going to have the S stereo descriptor, which is the incorrect stereo descriptor, which means that what I'll have to do to fix that I will have to erase my wedge and convert that into the dash. So now that is the R stereo descriptor, that's the one that I need. Then carbon number three, if I assign the stereo descriptor to that one, that is going to be the R stereo descriptor, so that one I guessed correctly right away. And there I have my structure. Now, method number two is going to involve a little bit more of three-dimensional imagination, but if you can do it in your head, that will make it much faster and much easier than spending time on assigning your RNS stereo descriptors. So, the way that works, I'm going to start the same way as in the previous method, where I will draw my zigzag, number my atoms, one, two, three, and four. Then I will add carbonyl to carbon number one. I will also add my OH to carbon number four to the last carbon right away, so it's out of the way. And from this point on, I'm going to start imagining myself floating around this molecule. And it's very important to float correctly, so to speak. So if my angle goes down and it's pointing in this direction, then I will imagine myself floating underneath and imagine how that will look from this perspective uh, based on the Fisher projection. If my angle is pointing up like that, then I'm going to imagine myself floating above the molecule and looking at it from above. So if I am under my molecule and I imagine the Fisher projection being uh, my molecule, then the OH and carbon number two is going to be on my right side. So it's going to be on the dash from this perspective. If I am floating above the molecule, then the OH and carbon number three is again going to be on my right, which means that from that perspective, it's going to be on the wedge. So for carbon number two, I was sitting under my molecule, looking at it from down up. And for carbon number three, I was floating above my molecule, looking at it from up down. And of course, if your carbon number one is on the left side and you are numbering your molecule from left to right, then your left and right is going to flip flop. So it's going to be the other way around. So choose whichever method works the easiest for you and practice that until you can get your structures with minimal effort. Now, if you needed to go from the dash wedge, or the bond line structure back to the fissure, it's going to be all the same steps, but in the reverse order. So let's look at a couple of examples. So here is the molecule from the very beginning of my video. Remember this guy? So if I wanna convert that from the fissure projection into the bond line structure, my step number one is going to be to number my atoms to make sure that I am not missing anything and I have good reference points. So one through six like that. Then the next step is going to be to draw my zigzag. So I have two, three, four, five, six atoms. I like to number it from right to left. So I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so carbon number one is my carbonyl. So I'm going to show that aldehyde functional group right there. Carbon number six also doesn't have any meaningful stereochemistry, so I will show that guy right there as well. 
All right, so carbons two, three, four, and five do have stereochemistry, so we need to pay attention to what we are doing here. Carbon number two, this one, has the R stereochemistry. So I can either imagine myself floating under the molecule and looking at that from that perspective for carbon number two, or I can arbitrarily assign the OH to either dash or wedge, check for the R and S stereodescriptor, and if I guess correctly, well, cool, if I didn't guess correctly, I'll have to flip my dash and wedge. So from this perspective, my OH should be on the dash, it's on my right in the Fisher projection, so if you were to check your R and S stereodescriptor, you would see that that one is the R stereodescriptor. Now, for the next one, for carbon number three, that one has the S stereodescriptor, and for carbon number three, since my zigzag is pointing up, I would have to be floating above the molecule and looking at that from this perspective. Well, in this case, my OH is on the left side, which means that that should be on the dash, and if I were to assign my R and S stereodescriptor for that one, that one is going to be S. For carbon number four, this one, we have the R stereodescriptor again. So for that guy, I'm going to be crawling under my molecule and looking at it from this perspective. OH is on the right side, so it is going to be again looking away from me in my bond line structure. And again, the stereodescriptor here is going to be R, just like in the case of the carbon number two. And finally, for carbon number five, for that one, we have the R stereodescriptor again. I'm going to be floating above my molecule, looking at it from this perspective. From here, the OH is going to be on the right side, so I'm going to draw it like that, and again, that one is going to be the R stereodescriptor if I use my CAP rules to assign the stereodescriptor to that atom. I've also mentioned that we can use all the same steps to go back from the bond line structures to the Fisher projection. So let's say we have this monstrosity in front of us and we need to convert that into a Fisher projection. Well, don't get intimidated by how big this molecule is. I know it looks scary, but let's go through all of our steps and see how easy it can be to convert it backwards. Step number one, I'm going to number my atoms so I have a good count of what I'm working with. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons in this case. Now, my next step is going to be to draw the Fisher projection stem, the fish bones, if you like. So I have my carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I will number them as well right away. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then, my carbon number one is an aldehyde functional group, so I'm going to draw that aldehyde right away. My carbon number seven is CH2OH, so I'm going to draw that right away as well, so at least I have two atoms out of the way, and at this point I can only worry about the other five. So take a few moments with this one, and either use the R and S stereodescriptors or float around the molecule and looking at it from the corresponding direction and try to see which directions your OHs and Hs are going to be in your Fisher projection. And once you're ready, let's go through that together. All right, so carbon number two has the R stereodescriptor, which means that in our Fisher projection, the OH will be on the right side. Carbon number three also has the R stereodescriptor, so that one will also be on the right side in the Fisher projection. Carbon number four, that one, guess what, also has the R stereodescriptor, so that one will also be on the right side of my molecule. Then, next one, 
carbon number 5, while well, that one is the S stereodescriptor, which means that OH now is going to be on the left side of my Fisher projection. The next one, carbon number 6, that one is the S stereodescriptor as well, so that one is going to be on the left side too, and carbon number 7 we already have. Likewise, if I was floating around the molecule, then for carbon number 2, I would have to sort of like sit under the molecule over there. For carbon number 3, I'm going to be floating above the molecule in this direction. For carbon number 4, I'm looking at the molecule from right over here. Carbon number 5, I have relocated a little bit below, so I look at the molecule like that. And finally, carbon number 6, I am back on the left side of my molecule, looking at that from this perspective. So now, when you know how to convert Fisher projections into the dash wedge bond line structures, or take your bond line structure and convert into the Fisher projection, you can branch into other molecular representations like Newman projections and chair conformations. Oh, and if you want to learn how to draw your Newman projections like a pro, watch this video next.